passed on the first 55 pegs. Then I actually e-wrapped back to peg one and knit off, which was I took the bottom loops over the top. If you're unfamiliar with how to do an e-wrap, I have better videos to show you, but basically it's very simple. You take the working yarn, behind the peg, wrap around the front. Behind the next peg, wrap around the front. That's all you do for the e-wrap. Now for row two, we're going to purl stitch, which I will go over real quick. The purl stitch, you hold the working yarn underneath the stitch on the peg. Take your loom tool and pull the working yarn up through. Take the loop off the peg, add the new loop. Show real close, real quick for a couple. Oh, put your new loop on. Do this all the way over to peg 55. I purled the peg 54. Here's peg 55. Now you can purl and put the stitch on there and then move it, or you can just purl and move the stitch. So what you do is you purl this peg, move it over one. Now what we are doing is the texture we are creating, we are going to increase on this, we will increase on this side, decrease on this side until, zoom out, make this easier to see, until the stitch that was originally on this peg is on this peg. So we are going to decrease 20 stitches on this side, increase 20 on this side. And for the increase, that's all you do. When you are on your purl row, you will take that last stitch wherever it's at, take it off the last peg, and move it over one. Now to do the decrease, we're going to take the stitch from peg one, put on peg two. In the stitch from peg three, we're going to put on peg four. Um, then you just push everything down. And now we are back to our e-wrap. Now when you do the two stitches like that, you e-wrap a row, or if you flat stitch, you stitch or knit stitch a row, and then purl stitch the next row, you are creating what is called a garter stitch. So now what you want to do is you want to kind of tighten up the stitch on that last peg, wrap it, and then e-wrap every peg. We are not slipping the first stitch on our purl rows. And what that means is we're not skipping that first peg when we're wrapping back for the purl rows. So purl to peg one. All right, so I e-wrapped all the way back to our first peg with stitches on it. I'm gonna take, there's two loops on it. I'm gonna take both the loops over the top. Now the second peg only has one loop on it because that was our empty peg. And the same over here, the second peg only has one loop on it. Now this last peg here, which is actually peg 56, but we're going to count it as our new peg 55 since this one is decreased one and this is increased one. That has two stitches on it. This is the only peg you'll leave two stitches on. And the reason is this first peg had two stitches on it and we knitted them off. If we would have knit one off on this, it would create um, both your sides. They wouldn't look the same. So the two stitches at the same time, two stitches at the same time. So knit off. Every peg. I knit off every peg. The very last peg is the only one that has two loops on it right now. The rest only have one. So what you're going to do is you're going to purl back to your last peg. You'll treat both these strands as one. You will increase one on this side and then you'll come back and decrease on this side the way I'd done before. Keep going back and forth. Uh, easy way to remember on your Pearl rows are the rows that you're going to do your increase and your decrease. Your e-wrap rows are always going to be going back towards your white peg. Um, do keep in mind this pattern is made to go with the beginning in PDF, so which a link to it is in the description below. So if you get confused at all, you're not sure what to do, uh, the PDF should clarify everything for you. Um, but of course, I do try to go over everything 
the best that I can in the video.